Okay, so we're going to look at operations on functions in this short little presentation. A couple more examples of how to operate with the four basic operations using functions to come up with some new function rules. So like we had talked about before, just so we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers and expressions, we can do the same thing with functions. The algebra here is not really that different than what we did with polynomials in terms of adding, subtracting, and multiplying them. There's a little bit of some new notation, a little bit of new symbols, which we've looked at. I just want to give you some more practice with it and give you some more examples of it to help you do this independently. Okay, so function operation notation. So f plus g of x, you just split it up. You do the rule for f of x plus the rule for g of x. You combine like terms, if possible, and you simplify. Same thing with subtraction. You just subtract the rules. You do f of x minus g of x. Be careful, though, because you are subtracting. You do have to think about distributing negative signs, if necessary. Okay, f times g of x, you're just going to multiply the two rules together. Use the distributive property if necessary, or FOIL if it's two binomials. And then finally, the only one that's a little tricky is division. So it is simply just putting the, the f rule over the g rule, if it's f, of g of, f over g of x, but there is that little catch that we have to make sure that the, whatever's in the bottom, we have to restrict the value of x so that we can't get a zero. Because remember, we cannot divide by zero. And that's what a fraction is. It's division. That's really what we're doing here. We're doing f of x divided by g of x. Okay, so let's look at one example. Oop, some of that is already there. We'll talk about it when it gets to it. So let's use f of x equals 2x and g of x equals negative 3x plus 7. So we'll start with f plus g of x. We split this up and we do f of x plus g of x. So we combine 2x and negative 3x plus 7. We combine the x terms. 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. Negative x plus 7 is my new rule. Okay, subtraction now. We'll do 2x minus negative 3x plus 7. But be careful, you have to distribute your negative sign into the parentheses. And then when you combine like terms here, your final answer is 5x minus 7. Okay? Multiplication, so we multiply 2x times negative 3x plus 7. We distribute the 2x into the parentheses, and we get negative 6x squared plus 14x. Finally, I had a little trouble with the animation on the PowerPoint here, so it's been sitting here all along. But when you do f, of g, f over g of x, that's just dividing f of x by g of x. So f of x is 2x, that goes up top. g of x is negative 3x plus 7, that goes down to the bottom. But we have to restrict this. We can't put any value for x we want in here because sometimes we might be dividing by 0. So like we talked about in class, we have to solve this bottom for 0, and that's a value we can't use for x. Okay? And I break that down a little bit here further. Like I said, since we don't know what x is, we're trying to generalize this for any value of x, sometimes we need to restrict the domain of our quotient function. Basically, all we do is we set the denominator equal to zero, we solve. We're going to be doing a lot of this in future chapters when we talk more about these things that are called rational expressions, which are basically what we're doing here when we divide two functions. We're creating a fraction that has variables on the top and the bottom. x cannot equal anything that makes the denominator zero. It's really all you need to know at this point. Okay? And there's the work for the one that we just did on the last slide. You set the denominator equal to zero, or in this case not equal to zero, you solve and you realize that x cannot equal 7 thirds. We'll look at another example, a little bit more complicated because I threw a quadratic your way. So f of x equals x squared minus 7x plus 2, and g of x equals x plus 4. Okay, so we'll add first. So we take our f of x rule and we combine it with the g of x rule. Combining like terms gets us x squared minus 6x plus 6. Okay, we subtract x squared minus 7x plus 2 minus the quantity x plus 4. But then we have to distribute that negative sign into all of g of x. So we get negative x minus 4 now. And then when we combine like terms, we get x squared minus 8x minus 2. All right, let's look at multiplication. f of x times g of x. So we set it up like this. We take our two functions. We multiply them together. Now we have to use our distributive property. So I'm going to take the x squared and multiply it by everything in the x plus 4 term. 
Then I'm going to take the negative 7x and distribute that in. And finally, the positive 2 and distribute that in. And here's what we get. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 4 is 4x squared. Negative 7x times x is negative 7x squared. Negative 7x times 4 is negative 28x. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 4 is 8. There's where all six of these products are coming from, pairing up everything in f of x with everything in g of x. Now we just combine our like terms. We have 1x cubed. Negative 7 plus 4 gets me negative 3x squared. 2x minus 28x gets me negative 26x, and 8 just hangs on for the ride. Last but not least is division. So the easy part is just sticking our rule for f of x over the rule for g of x right there. But this x plus 4 cannot equal 0. So we have to restrict it and say the only thing that could make this 0 is if x were negative 4. So we have to tell the reader, look, this is the general rule for doing f of x divided by g of x. However, we can't make x negative 4. That's the only number we can't use for this rule. Otherwise, we'll be dividing by 0, and that is a no-no. Okay, so with that, we're going to do more of this in class. We're going to practice it just a little bit more in class tomorrow before we move on to the next piece. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to bring them to class, but I know because of the shortened schedule today, I wanted to give you a little bit more of a taste of this for you to attempt your homework. So with that, I bid you good evening and see you in class tomorrow.